Perfectly Queer with It Gets Better. Hello and welcome to Perfectly Queer. It is your resident non-binary butch, Ever Maynard. And Taylor Scriber, your semi-friendly chaos bisexual. And together, we are here to help you live your boldest, most authentic life. And to help you build community and spark joy with each other for roughly an hour. You know this, give or take. Give or take. Some give change, or take. You know? Honestly, I was really vibing with our theme song just now. Like, right? I mean, every day. And then I was like, man, it would be great if we could get this remixed. And then oh. I was like... <gasps> Like a Why? house remix of the theme song, that would be dope. <laughs> yes, would be so I dope. was like, I need to focus. We have a show to do, but I'm like, turn up the levels. <laughs> uh, how are you doing this week? <laughs> you know, I'm doing really well. I got some um, exciting news, and I hopefully can share it with you all on the 30th. Um, so super stoked about that. How are you? Yeah. I'm good. I already know the news because we're friends. So you are. We're told friends. The secret. <laughs> um, I'm good. I just got back from my vacation in Colorado with my family. That was really fun. It was good to see them. And now I'm back in my apartment. So that's great. Very cool. Yeah, your dad was so cute. Just oh my gosh. <laughs> he is the show's biggest fan. Every week he's like, "What time is it again? I will be there. I will be. I will be there in the Twitch chat." You know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Taylor. Like, so this week, like, what did you get better at? What mm. do you want to get better at? I am getting really good at home renovations. I just mm -hmm. learned how to do recess lighting in my house. Okay. Um, so I went to Home Depot, and I was just like, I want recess lighting. I want to be able to change them on, like, the app on my phone and whatever. And I did it with my best friend like two weeks ago and it turned out really well. It was a little difficult. It's not, you know, for the faint of heart. What's up? How many hours of YouTube did you watch? Um, at least two. Um, okay. and then a subsequent other hour once we were like in the middle of it because we were like, no, something is wrong. <laughs> We've done something wrong here. Okay, time out. What if instead of like this old house, do you remember? I don't know. I'm oh, I old. know what that is, yes. I'm elderly. Um, no, you're not! <laughs> put me out to pasture. Um, rusty bones. Rusty bones. Um, you should do a queer this old house. Oh, queer I would love house. that. I would love that. We want to call it third times the charm, me and my friend Anna, because like every time it's like, oh, we got it. And then the second time we're like, no, this time for sure. And the third time we're like, okay, How now we really have it. How long did it take you to do that? Yeah. <laughs> no, for real. How long did it take you to install Oh, you? Yeah. It, like something like four to six hours probably okay um, hang on I'm really, going, I'm really going down like a butch dad path i'm it's like yep, yep and how long that take you how long that take you there yeah four to six hours <laughs> that sounds about right y'all use a ladder or like a bucket and some bricks just to step up <laughs> a little step ladder leave me alone anyway um, <laughs> what are you uh what are you getting better at uh as you like traverse your life ever uh, Honestly, this is going to sound crazy. Mm -hmm. This is going to sound very boring. I'll rephrase. I just talked about recess lighting. Can you please? <laughs> well, you're talking about, I, I'm getting really good at keeping my house very tidy. <sighs> putting my laundry up immediately. Because I might as well just like let it lay there for a few days, mm -hmm. a week. Re restart so the dryer a few times, you know. I did a deep clean, and we're going on two weeks. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, thank a you. Round, a round of applause. I know that it's like, I know that's not like crazy, but I was like. No, that's impressive. I don't think people understand ordered. how hard it is to keep a, a house clean. How about everybody in the chat? What are you guys doing? Yeah, what, what are you all up to? What's up with y'all? <laughs> yeah, a ladder. Ard William Avon. Yeah, a, a ladder, a step ladder. It's wooden, and it's very cute. There um, is nothing better than a tidy home. And I keep manifesting, like, porch hangs yeah. and, oh. you know, chill nights. And I'm like, yeah. Those are the, be... listen, if you're a young person watching the show, these are the small, simple joys of adulthood. Mm. A clean house and recess lighting. Get ready for it. <laughs> it's a blast. Time of your life. 
<laughs> Truly. <laughs> um, but we have a great show for you guys today. As always, we're going to start out with the Queer Current, where we tell you about current news stories that are happening that have to do with queerness or just being queer in the United States and beyond that. Um, and then we're going to have a very, 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 very special friend of the family. Mm -hmm. This week we're going to be talking to V Spear, who is a podcaster and a TikToker. I'm sure you've seen their uh, segment on TikTok, Under the Desk News. They do a lot of great work. It's going to be really great speaking with them. Then we're going to go straight into the Converse Quick Hits, where we're going to be bringing you all of our favorite memes, TikToks, trends from all over the internet that we think you need to see this week. And we're going straight into our Queerly Creative. We have an incredible uh, music video. It's giving... I'm going to say it's giving upcycle vibes, speaking Absolutely. with what we're talking about right now. Maybe not upcycle. Like Macklemore Thrift Store, but make it gay. Make it gay. Yeah. Um, it's retro with Kyle Monsinger. Mm. And then um, we're going to be straight going into let's talk about it. We have an incredible question that I cannot wait to dig into. Uh, and then finally, we are going to be watching some videos for the It Gets Better Project. And today we're watching some of their new um, dictionary fundamental videos. And guess what? They're animated. And, and they're, they're really They're cute. so cute. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. But before we get into any of that, we want to first thank our sponsors, the Humble Bundle community, for which without them, we would not be able to do this show every two weeks. This mm. time we're doing it three times three this month, which is amazing. Weeks. But we wouldn't be able to do that without Humble Bundle and their generous community. So thank you so much, Humble Bundle community, for your continued support for our show. Yeah. So get comfy, get settled in. Hope you got your glass of water because, y'all, it's time for the Queer Current. Okay, somebody got very good. Ari Luna, before we get into this queer current, got very mm -hmm. good at my sourdough, best loaf yet. <gasps> you must have I'm a lot so of jealous. Where do you get your starter from? I, I want to start doing sourdough. You need a starter for that, and I don't have one. Do you get it from, like, a friend? You some, Yeah, it's like a community thing, and it's like it, you have to know a friend who knows a guy who knows a guy. It's a whole thing. It's a whole mm -hmm. thing. Um, <laughs> but anyway, you guys... <laughs> As usual, as usual, the news never stops. I'm sorry, I'm an avid baker in my spare time. The news never stops, um, and it is continuous, and there's always so much information out there. So we have kind of distilled it into five news stories that we think you guys should be following. Um, so starting with our first news story, A League of Their Own has mm -hmm. premiered on Amazon Prime Video. All episodes are available. It's based off of the 1990s movie, League of Their Own. And I am so excited to binge this weekend. So excited. I mean, this is, first of all, big fan of the film. Big fan mm -hmm. of the movie. Mm -hmm. Growing up, I was like, these people are gay. I'm gay, but they're not telling anybody they're gay, so I won't. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> them but they're not gay um, right this is like clearly gay. <laughs> they are as uh, they are yeah frankly um and, like they just had this really great interview in the advocate mm -hmm. mag about mm -hmm. how they like intended to make this like the gayest most inclusive mm -hmm. leave their own yet and people are crying i'm all my friends on twitter are like i can't stop crying <laughs> no <laughs> Out of literally i also love kind of in the advocate the the uh interview they had they talked about how you know um black women weren't allowed in this league at that time it was a segregated league and how they speak to that story of black women and latinx women and trans women that kind of existed within these teams or in the periphery of these teams um i just like like it just feels like an incredibly inclusive story i also love that they brought one of the original players in as a consultant and how she was like yeah i think out of like the 650 girls in this league about 400 of them were gay and i was like nice <laughs> nice we love to see it nice nice it was like um, one of the few places though like okay we don't have time to get a queer history we're in the queer league no. <laughs> but it's true like sports is one of the few places where queer women were able to like come together and like actually like be around each other and so it's really great to see a piece of media like this that's and to. also like speaking on um coming to i don't i don't know why i said i there's no good transition Just, in my mind right now i was like i mean so of you're gay. together <laughs> yeah this is my so you're gay it's so speaking of coming together 
Uh, we, our second news story of the day is longtime ESPN reporter M.A. Vopel comes out as transgender. This is so exciting. Mm -hmm. This is so wonderful. They just Absolutely. made a post on Twitter. This is great for visibility. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also really exciting in the sports world as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. I think because a lot of the times with sports players or sports newscasters, they come out uh, retroactively after their careers have already passed. Mm -hmm. And it's really great that M.A. Um, felt safe enough and comfortable enough in their work in, in his work environment to just be like, yeah, this is who I am. Um, I remember being younger and my grandmother's really into sports and women's sports specifically, um, seeing their newscasts and being like, wow, what a cool person. Um, and so it's, yeah. it's fabulous to see him living in his truth now. Actually, I love that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, you know what else is super cool? Our okay. third news story where we see the iconic ally herself, Lady Gaga. <laughs> um, a lot she had of my a wonderful... friends were at the concert in, what, New <gasps> Jersey? And I was, like, losing it because there were, like, people from L.A. were there. And I was I'm like, so where jealous. is she playing? And they're like, I'm so <laughs> jealous because I actually love the Chromatica era. Um, but this was at um, her Washington, D.C. leg of the concert where she, you know, gave a lot of impassioned speeches about her um, affirming same-sex mm -hmm. marriage at a federal level, affirming abortion rights for women and people who could become pregnant across the country, just affirming bodily autonomy and being able to, you know, live in your truth. And this is what we expect from Lady Gaga, but it is nice, nonetheless, for someone of her caliber to, like, I think, speak on issues especially like this. Especially in D.C. Like, especially. Especially in D.C. Especially. Knock on their door, Gaga. Let them know that you're here. Bust down their door, Gaga. Don't knock. Truly, truly. <laughs> Use those boots. Uh, our fourth story. <laughs> uh, honestly, using those boots, moving on forward, Minnesota is on track to have its first openly transgender lawmaker in Love state that. legislature. Yes, congratulations to Lee Fink for a successful, mm -hmm. so far, political campaign in Michigan. Um, we're all rooting for you over here. We love seeing representation for all LGBT plus people, but especially trans people during mm. this time of like serious attack uh, legislatively and governmentally speaking. It's so nice to see representation like this, um, not only for, you know, queer people, but for trans youth and trans people in general. I love it. I think it's fabulous. Yeah. So if you haven't voted and you're of voting age, yeah, and you vote. are this in. This is why voting, and this is why being active, and even if it's in your community, like absolutely, you're... especially if it's in your community, yeah. especially well, in your community, but you know. Yeah. Okay. And I think that that like ties into our fifth and last news story. Um, a group in Jamestown Township in what was it, Michigan? Michigan. Um, they recently voted to uh, stop funding at their only library in their whole township because it refused to remove titles that spoke to LGBTQ plus themes, um, which is really, really sad, frankly, because a lot of the people apparently didn't realize that losing that funding meant they would lose the library in totality. I mean, but if the, they were already ignorant about that, of course they were going to be ignorant about how their actions would lose the library. Like, well, 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 if it's in the consequences of my own actions. But, <laughs> but it's we great because... We got to put that on the shirt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, if it isn't the consequence... But what's great about this story is that, you know, there's been a lot of outreach to that community and they have managed to raise $200,000 um, to keep their library open, at least hopefully till the end of next year, the spring of next year. And hopefully by then they'll be able to find other legislative means to keep their library open. Hopefully the community learns better. Um, but this is why, as ever said before, voting is incredibly important if you are of age to do so. You need to be registered to vote. Voting in your local community elections mm -hmm. is so, 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 so important. So important. Also, I love that the library was like, no, we're not going to take these books off our shelf. Right. We'd rather shut the whole thing. Fine. Shut the whole thing right. down. We're not doing that. Fine. And I, I think it's an amazing move of solidarity on the library's part. Um, yeah. I love it. And Thank I really you, do I hope they're able to continue working. Uh, so shout out to the Jamestown Township Library Group. Okay, so uh, you got to go full dad 
um zone ever you gotta go full dad on your bronco you know i already am i just got some new floor seen... mats and i'm about to put in little steps on the bronco so people can get in if you haven't oh. seen ever's instagram with all of <laughs> all of their bronco pics you are you are missing out i can't even explain it to you i gotta get some i i i knew i do need to put on some more bronco pics i i agree i agree somebody asked me weeks. if it was a rental and i almost <gasps> The audacity. Yeah, I was like, please. Because the way you fought for that Bronco, I remember. I remember this journey. Oh my gosh. How dare. How, how dare. dare. <laughs> so um, thank you for bringing that up in the chat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I'm just reading this chat right now. It's popping no, up. No, I, so yeah, blah, blah, blah. seventh grade. Seventh grade. I'm glad seventh grade was good for some of y'all. Seventh grade I, was awful for me. I personally did not have a good time. <laughs> It was so awkward for me. Ooh. Anyway, uh, that is a the dark place. We both yeah. just—I was looking out the window. <laughs> Thousand yard stare. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for joining us for the queer current. Um, before we get into our next segment, friends of the family, with our special guest, we are first going to do one of our favorite segments: a cute little stream cleanse. <laughs> I'm gonna start re referring to myself as a pride cactus because I'm prickly and cute. Oh, I like that. Right? Um, but anyway, let's uh, get into friends. So, of but the anyway, so you're. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into friends of the family. Yes. So, as we said at the beginning of the show, we have a very special friend that'll be joining us very soon, but first I'm going to read um, their little blurb. Uh, so, V Spirit, if they are a renaissance creator. They lead the hospitality industry's effort to build a more diverse and inclusive industry for LGBTQ plus community as a founding board member of the Queer Food Foundation, as well as being a keynote speaker, motivational coach, and hosting their very own daily news segment, Under the Desk News, uh, which has a dedicated following over 2.4 million engaged viewers of which I am one. I love them on TikTok. Wow, amazing. Um, Under the Desk News offers 60 second daily wrap ups of current events, political analysis and special interest stories explained. Yeah, and if y'all haven't seen uh, V, if you're not familiar with their work, we're gonna show you a little, we're gonna show you a clip. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be like, oh yeah. <laughs> I know them, I know that person. I know that person. <laughs> the saying goes, history is written by the victor, which is probably why there's so little queer history available. But we've always been there. I mean, the Greek gods were non-binary entities before somebody decided they were male and female. And we're here today, from political activists like the Butch Boston bus drivers who started the first union, to Olympians like Billie Jean King, and celebrities like Elliot Page, Janelle Monet, and Laverne Cox. They can try to ban the books, they can try to deny us our history, but the fact is we have always been here. And when we live our most authentic, happy lives, we send out a beacon to other people so they can find us. We belong. You belong. It gets better. You are precious, worthy, and perfectly queer just the way you are. And you can find out more about how we're perfectly queer this Wednesday, August 17th at 6 p.m. Eastern, when I'll be a guest on the Perfectly Queer vodcast on Twitch. Perfectly Queer is brought to you by the It Gets Better Project, and I truly hope you'll join us for this important conversation. Yay! Hey! Oh, they're here! <laughs> yeah. okay. okay, thank okay. you. Welcome yes. to the show. I'm excited to be here, especially because you said, you know, there ever has all these pictures of the Bronco on the Instagram, but I am just seeing like thirst trap after thirst trap after thirst trap here. Always at Hot Butch Bronco. I'm there very is proud one of called you. Hot Butch ah, Bronco that I do need to post, but that is where I keep my thirst. <laughs> the aesthetic is immaculate. Immaculate. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. Let them know. Um, but um, uh, likewise, hello. hello. Look yeah. at this dapper. <laughs> also, tell us. Okay, but I, we got a lot to talk about. But before we do, we always start off with names and pronouns. I'm yes. ever. 
they them. Mm -hmm. I'm Taylor, she, her. And I'm the spirit. I, I love the they them pronouns. Those are the ones that I like the most. I recently switched to use all pronouns as a way to like mm -hmm. take away bullying power from mean people on the internet who- Oh, I love that. Yeah, Absolutely. so I was like, now you can't, you can't own that one. But my friends, they, them. Amazing. Very cool. We love that. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ooh. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. It really is such a treat. The, the hair. Uh, I know. Incredible. We were doing the tech no. check. They were like, you got to back up. The hair is not getting in the frame. <laughs> All the way on the wall. Ooh, well, let's just Look, get right into a, it. Yeah, I was like, we have yeah. a lot to do, and let's I'm just like, get right let's into go. It. what hair products are you using? Yeah. <laughs> um, I am a foodie myself, and I yes. know that you're really into the culinary arts. That's kind of how you got your start on TikTok, low key. And so yes. I was wondering, is there anything that you're like super into right now, cooking wise, a meal, a type of cooking style? Yeah, so I was the director of impact for the James Beard Foundation. I led all the LGBTQ Ooh. inclusion work and the women's entrepreneurship work. And I, I have to say it's hamburgers, man. I know that's like such a normal no, thing, right. but I grew up where like a hamburger was like a luxury meal for us because it didn't come out of like a can or a freezer box. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm very into experimenting with different types of grilling and different types of burgers. And we recently started making these like, um, like kidney bean burgers as like oh, cool. a vegan alternative. Cause you know, I'm 40 now. I got to watch the heart. I can't be doing all this beef mm, stuff. Red meat. We can't be doing it. So <laughs> we're doing it. We're just experimenting with different kinds of beans. And I think that is such a fun way to discover new flavors because beans really harness like the spices you put in they hold them it's true plus better for your heart overall tastes great great mouthfeel so yeah bean burgers come hang out good to know <laughs> writing that down i will yeah. actually i I'll should bring over. back yeah i should bring back some of the 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 early culinary tiktok where i was like making hamburgers during the pandemic and i'd trying. be so down yeah so, down. <laughs> so okay I definitely want to know more um, about your the factor of your role in with Rainbow Families. Can you tell yes. us a little bit more about Rainbow Families? So when I'm not under the desk, I work with this group called Rainbow Families. They've been around since 1998. And what they do is provide community resources and assets for queer families, which means people who are either prospectively about to become parents or they already have children or maybe their children are queer. It's mostly focused on the queer parent and trying to give them all of the resources and support and backup that other parents get to have, right? It's mm -hmm. it's a unique and small group of people. So we have to kind of stick together. I do not yet have children. I was brought into this because I was sort of like thinking maybe we wanted to adopt. They have this great program called Mamie Baby which is wow. for queer people who are like, maybe I want children, maybe I don't. Mm. And I know for me growing up, one, I didn't think I was going to get to be old, never mind, going to get to have a family. And now I'm looking at things differently. And I'm like, why not me? Maybe mm -hmm. a baby. We'll see. So um, I really loved working with that group. We've raised, uh, we're a tiny, tiny group. So every dollar counts, but we raised a good amount of money this Christmas to really help kids in foster care, even like help them find families, queer kids so that they can come home for holidays. Like I'm going to start crying because it just is such a, no, it's just, yeah. the work we do is so important there. And I'm just so proud of everybody there. Absolutely. I love also how you kind of framed what I think is a, a large perspective for a lot of queer people um, in that like we don't really when we're when we're growing up, we don't really know if the family thing will work out for us mm -hmm. at all and whether or not children will be like an actual reality for a lot of us. And so I love that you're kind of like advocating for at least a level of education for the maybe that exists. In yeah, the future. yeah. I think that's beautiful because you don't know, you know, we didn't grow up. I think, you know, if you grow up in a heterosexual way, there's sort of this expectation of the steps of your life. You'll mm -hmm. go to college, you'll get married, you'll have babies, then they'll go to college and give you grandchildren. And it, it just is so laid out. It, traditionally, that's just the way it's gone. And for us, it was like, I'm going to move to New York City at 17 and then my life will begin. I didn't think about having a family or anything else, yeah. you know? So now to be able to have this moment, I think it speaks so much to the work that queer people have done over the last 50 years to, to allow this to be an option for us and to allow it to be something really common. We do as queer people get to have a legacy. We get to have a family. We get to participate in all the joys that humanity has and all those different ways of loving. Absolutely. Incredible. Absolutely. Perfectly said. Um, also, oh, yeah. something that I love too, and like I see that in the chat, logo genius logo genius also said it the why not me mindset right. is mm -hmm. a favorite 
Yeah. It's like, why not me? Of course we right? deserve this. Of course right. I deserve this. Absolutely. Yeah. Plus, I think I'd be a really good dad. I haven't worked out the name, but I feel like I would have the dad responsibilities because dads are like so rad to me. Like, I think the whole dad culture is just mm -hmm. great. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not I mean, really good at sports. I we just talked about or... dad culture. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> recess <Absolutely> lighting. Cool. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not great at like what might be considered a traditional dad thing, but I do think I could give that kind of validation. That vibe. Yeah, that, that vibe, like that cool dad vibe. Like, you're okay. No. Fuck up, champ. I don't know. Maybe I'll be a terrible dad. We'll see. Fuck up, champ. You're going to be a great dad. You're going to be a great, great dad, please. Um, you know, to pivot a little bit, um, we know that you host a lot of shows. You yeah. have your hands in a lot of pot in t pots in terms of, like, the hosting that you do. Um, and we know that you uh, host your own show on Lemonada Media. Yes. Um, but just in, like, general, how does it feel to kind of, like, host your own things? This, Under the Desk News, like, what is that feeling like for you? It's incredible. It's an absolute dream come true. I think, again, it was something that I never thought was going to be possible. I had like helped other people be the face of a community or rise up or have power or have influence, but I never really thought it would be something that I, as a very visibly queer person, would be able to achieve for myself, that people would listen to me, that there would be an ability to participate broadly in the American conversation around things like politics, healthcare, stuff that we didn't really have that big of a it's not like there was all that many mentors that came ahead. Now, of course, we have great mentors like Dr. Rachel Levine. And you see it again. Why not me? It's, it's her. It could be me. Um, and so hosting my own show is truly just a dream come true. And I just try to live in every single minute, just soaking up and being so grateful for the people who trust me owning that responsibility and then also wanting to create a space where people could have a good time where they could feel safe interacting with the news where everybody gets to be smart because so much of my life growing up I didn't feel like I was smart in the ways that the world wanted me to be you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely okay but I do have to ask like how or like what inspired your TikTok channel under the desk news like what was the emphasis you're like oh I I can do this. And like, where did the name come from? Mm -hmm. So I've always been really good at helping people understand things that were complicated. And in my youth and through a lot of my career, like you said, I had worked in the food industry. I was a caterer in DC and I would cater for the Capitol and for, behind, for big society parties in Washington, DC. So I had all of this behind the scenes, like Butler's Pantry information about these politicians. So I was very interested in it because I was immersed in it. I didn't want to be one, but I liked hearing what they were talking about. Yeah. And that really is how I started my education in politics and understanding the way that DC works and the ways that these politicians behave because nobody expects the waiter to be listening, right? Nobody expects the event designer to know what's going on. So they speak so freely and those same people that were in power then are in power now. So like, I know what Nancy Pelosi's favorite ice cream flavor is. And I also know what she talks about behind the scenes. And I know she's keeping that same energy now. So I knew that I could interpret what was going on politically at a time when things were really divisive for folks in a way that was really simple and humanizing. And so that's when I started doing it. Um, and I, the under the desk thing again comes from a place of confidence and I didn't think it was me. I didn't want to sit at the desk and be just another authority figure in a suit telling you what's going on and what it means. I was like, let's, if I had a water cooler in my house, I guess it could have been water cooler news, but I didn't. So it was like, all right, I'll get under the desk and it'll be like, we're meeting, like we work together and we're meeting under the desk and we're going to have this like secret time where we're like, did you hear that? This is what I heard. Are we right? We're right. This is crazy. And then go back to our normal lives. And so that's what under the desk is. It's a space to kind of like explore, be safe, have conversations, not be judged, not have the final answer, but just sort of like hear things and try them out. And then go back with better information to our real lives. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. I love making things more accessible to people. And like at the beginning, you talked about how like you deal with, I'm sure since your following is so big, a lot of like negativity I'm online. Sure. And I'm sure also like having to parse through a lot of the news mm -hmm. to make it distillable for an audience is really exhausting. And so I'm wondering yeah. like what advice you'd have to listeners or future journalists on how to like kind of create healthy mental boundaries with yourself when you are kind of inundated with the news the way that you are. I created a character for myself 
this is an exaggeration of who I, I am that. as a person. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're a creator, that is so helpful. Like, even if you think of Rachel Maddow or Jake Tapper or whoever, they have a suit that they wear, they have a costume, they have a persona that they carry, they have a character. And I did the same thing because you have to bring yourself authentically to it, but you also have, there is a delineation between who I am when I'm doing my work, this creator work, and who I am when I'm just like hanging out, having watermelon beers with my friends. Like it's, you know, it's the same, but it's different. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really important to keeping a good mentality. I also listen to my audience and I want this to be content for someone. It, if I was just doing it for me, then that's really not that fulfilling and that's kind of not coming from the right place. So I listen to the audience. I do read a lot of the comments and most of them are very good or they're asking what the next question is, which is what's the best. My audience said, I don't wanna hear about certain topics because I'm inundated with them other places. And so I feel like I lose it and I tune out because I'm too tired of hearing about how trans kids are getting attacked every single day. So I'm not gonna put that in the news every single day. I'm gonna mm -hmm. pop it when we need to talk about it and then we're gonna close it so that people can process it. And I just try to keep people conversational so that when you're at the dinner table or when you're at school or wherever you are, you've got enough information to be social with your friends and chat, but not so much information that you're gonna cry and give up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's kind of like how I do for myself. You know, I don't need to be an expert on every single one of these topics. The ones I like, I'll rabbit hole and obsess over. But of most of the time, I'm just giving you enough to stay included. Mm -hmm. Very Absolutely. cool. Yeah. And if you're curious, folks are going to go and look it up. And that's half the fun is being like, oh, I didn't know that they found uh, found out that MS is now actually uh, from several different viruses. And so they're, mm. they have new treatment. That was very exciting to me. I'm going to go find out more about that. Somebody else might be really excited when we do just good news. Somebody else might be really excited about the politics stuff, but you get to kind of choose your own adventure. I think that's important. You can't care about everything equally, you know? Yeah. Real. Very it feels true. like it's it's also like nice to get things in like little like yeah like you said like enough to know we could tell your friends you can mm -hmm. have a wonderful conversation yeah and then you get to walk away feeling like the smart person of the group <laughs> and that's what we say on the podcast V interesting came <laughs> so V interesting came out of doing under the desk news where I had just these quick hits and I wanted to be able to give people what happened after the headlines so V interesting is a deeper dive on what happened how did it turn out which is so important because we never get that resolution from the news they never mm -hmm. tell us how things turned out mm -hmm. and so we allow you to be curious it stays light um, but it becomes more of a conversation I just want to keep you company and be like a good friend Absolutely. incredible well thank you so much for joining us v uh before we go before we let you go we love to play a game called canonically queer yes um <laughs> yeah like so it's canonically we're gonna have a really great queer. little intro song and then the game is you pick something in your house and you tell us why it is the queerest thing in your house or your room uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. So my wife is on tour or I would have picked her because she is by far the queerest person I know and we love her for it. She, oh. She's queer all the way through, but she's on tour right now. So she's not available. So this is on my desk. And I think that this is decidedly queer because it's like a little bowl with like a fun kind of piratey octopus in it, which is always fun. But then I keep like these little acorn glass ornaments in it because of course I do. <laughs> Knickknacks are queer. Knickknacks are queer. Knickknacks are queer, and they were made by like a woman artist, and they're glass and beautiful. And I'm like, that's very cottage core. That's very early pandemic. That's sir, you know, it's giving safety items. It's giving. It makes a nice noise, you know. So that very is the queerest cool. thing I have. <laughs> Knickknacks. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that with us. That was yeah. Amazing. Thank you guys. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Oh no, I was just gonna ask like two things one yeah. is there anything coming up in your life that you want the audience to know about and two where can we find you on social media yeah so i'm going to be at podcast movement next week in dallas just talking about all things podcasts what is new news how to be a part of new news um how to get good information and protect yourself from misinformation online um so that is very exciting next week be interesting airs every tuesday and friday you can find it anywhere you get your podcasts and again it's newsy, but it's more like fun conversation hangout time. Um, so you don't have to be afraid. It's here to keep you company. Throw me in your earbuds when you're going to the Home Depot, walking around the grocery store. You'll never be alone. Listen to be interesting. Um, and then we've got Under the Desk News. So you can find me on TikTok, uh, Instagram, YouTube now at Under the Desk News. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing and chatting with us. Yes, thank you for having me. I was looking forward to it all week. It's so great to meet y'all. It was nice to meet you too. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was fun. They were so great. Oh my gosh. That was so much much fun. Wow. (laughs) Amazing, amazing, amazing. Mm. Yeah, check out their podcast and their yeah. TikTok, you guys. Their TikTok is super fun. I love seeing their videos on my feed mm-hmm. all the time. Um, 100%. 100%. Y'all, we have... Look, I'm kind of bummed that <laughs> we don't get to no, talk I'm, because I'm I was sad, like, actually. I want to talk about tailored suits. Anyway. Uh, but y'all, it is time for the Converse Quick Hit, so get ready. The Converse Quick Hit. I'm sorry. I'm just screaming at the chat right now, talking about their knickknacks. Like, are William Vaughn talking about their slinky on their desk? Same. Same. Oh, my God. Just yeah. random knickknacks around my house. They serve no purpose but to bring me joy, truly and honestly. That's what a knickknack is. It's it to is. bring you joy. Literally. Just a Some fun little like, treat for myself. what is this clutter? It's not. It's not clutter. It's joy in my house. It's gay joy. In my house. It's um, Speaking joy. of. Okay. Speaking of gay joy, uh, oh, I let's love get this. this. I love yeah. this. Let's get into this video from our friends. She's just in the background. And she says, I wish that I could be like the cool kids. Because all the cool kids, they seem to fit in. I wish that I could be like the cool kids. Like the cool kids. Uh, I would have been so petty and i would have been i would have been itemized lists of people who said i could never i would have been like and to you 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 i would type it out yeah she did that with a lot of grace Mm -hmm. and then it's like me in the music video but i mean that was really nice Mm -hmm. (laughs) but that's like my gemini energy coming out literally same (laughs) y'all we have uh we have to move on to our next video and that is our trends this is the store sign trend and and you know i'm about to hop on this i love it tj max once said let freedom ring but first <laughs> coffee i whoop you good morning dragons get ready with me for my 23rd birthday dinner it's not a dad bod it's a father figure love is love <laughs> this is cute though <laughs> autumn vibes I am embracing each moment with gratitude. <laughs> Actually, I need that. <laughs> the last sign, uh, I like unironically also need it. That is true. It's very true. <laughs> it's very true. Honestly, I love the one she was like, oh, this mug's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it is cute. It is cute. A little corny, but it's cute. That's most pride attire, I feel like. Like pride gear. It's like a little corny, but ultimately, like, you know, the sentiment is, is cute. I've been too afraid to say that, but yes, I agree. Like, you're just like, uh, okay. <laughs> this is fine. Um, and now we're going to, we're going to close it out, you guys, with our video for odds and ends. Cursed with attraction to multiple genders, the bisexual cannot form platonic attachments. As such, the bisexual has no friends, only prey. <laughs> Really. And it's right. And if you think you're safe, you're not. <laughs> you're not. Mm-mm. I love how it was like a nature documentary. It's like, yeah. Ooh, what are we watching? Um, y'all, this has been the Converse Quick Hit. And of course, before we go into our queerly creative video, we've got another bonus for you. We got another stream cleanse for you. Your problem's not that you're poor. It's just you suck at being poor. If you want nice shit, you're just going to have to take some old shit and make it nice shit. Being completely useless is a luxury of the rich, and you're not rich, you're poor. If you want to be poor and just have old garbage, then fine, you're good to go. But if you're going to sit around and cry about how you have nothing nice, but then you're doing nothing to have anything nice, that's your own fault. If you're able-bodied and broke, that's nothing but opportunity. And if you're like, I don't know how to fix stuff, yeah, no one does, until they do. You ever met a baby who knew how to do flat roofing? You're going to suck at it at first. But you're poor. If you want it to be nice, you're going to have to just keep doing it until it's nice. I know people in their 40s and don't even know how their toilet works. You sit on it every day. Just sit on it backwards once and look at the innards. There's tons of old trash everywhere. Just take it home. Polish it up. Now you have nice stuff. You go to a job and you sell a dude your time for an hourly wage. Why not sell yourself some time? 
And in exchange for your time, now you have nice shit. I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm rooting for you. So get out there. Get I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting truly, for you. Truly Honestly, that vibes. video felt like an attack. <laughs> and it made me feel like I should be crafting all the time. And it's like... I, I screamed out loud at the... You ever met a baby that knew how to do flat, flat uh, roofing? No, you haven't. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That is a skill we all need. You're absolutely right. <laughs> uh, inspirational. Y'all, it's time to go into the Queerly Creative. I'm laughing at myself so hard right now because I'm clearly killing these transitions. On the I think you're doing great. <laughs> I think you're doing fabulous. I'm not trying to be mean to you. <laughs> no, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> um, but like we said at the top of the show, you guys, uh, we are going to be watching a very cute little video by a person named Kyle Motzinger. The video is called Retro, which you can find on YouTube. And it's giving... It's giving queer Macklemore thrift okay. store vibes. It's giving, I don't even know, like Miss Doubtfire sort of like. I can just, see that. Right? Um, but you know, speak, we'll, we'll let the video speak for itself. Intro is fire.
I just want to say, first of all, the chat, absolutely, I need that wig. The wiggery in this video, okay. can we talk about it? Astounding. 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 That Long David one? Bowie jean jacket, I need it right. Oh. Kyle, if you're, if you're okay, watching this. we got this, a man on our hands. Is, but I want your jacket, and I'm demanding <laughs> it. I'm not going to be nice like with Chella Man. I, you better give me that jacket. So, Kyle, we're going to slide into your Instagram DMs, and we're going to request. That I'm not sliding. I'm coming in there like a wrecking ball. Give me that jacket, Kyle. <laughs> I need that jacket, Kyle. Jacket. Kyle, now. <laughs> like, that's dad energy. I'm going to be dad yeah. energy right now. Yeah, jacket. Well, jacket. Jacket. Give it to me. And look, if you want to find out more info on Kyle, if you want to be a super fan like we are, follow them on Instagram and on YouTube. Uh, we'll put their hyperlinks in the chat, as always. But you can find them on Instagram at Kyle, K-Y-L-E. And their last name spelled out is M-O-T-S-I-N-G-E-R. Yes, what a fabulous, fabulous video. Thank you so much for sharing that with the world, Kyle. Um, and now, you know, we're going to move into our favorite segment where we answer mm -hmm. all of y'all's questions. So let's talk about it. It's always really nice to get questions from you guys because even though we are not professionals by any means in giving advice, we love to be able to re relate our lived experiences to maybe help you live through your life experiences as they come. So, We have an incredible question today. Thank you so much for reaching out and asking this. Uh, the question is, I'm bisexual, but people keep asking me if I have a preference. Taylor. Do you have any advice on what I can say to people who ask me who I like more? Well, dear reader, dear question asker, first things first, they can mind their business. Okay. That's my first piece of advice. You don't owe that sort of explanation about your sexuality, about your preferences and attraction to anyone at all. Mm -hmm. You do not owe that to anyone but yourself. And you should know that of course, like Ever and I say all the time on this show, that queerness is a fluid thing. Mm -hmm. It will change a lot. The person, the bisexual that I was when I was closeted at 18 is different from the bisexual I was when I came out at 22 is different from the bisexual that I am now at 25. That will change. And the last thing you want is to like explain yourself as you are now and then have to backtrack with people who do not like First deserve. of all, get it. Yeah, they don't, they're not going to get it. That's the other thing about people hold bisexual bisexual people to this weird standard where we have to like lock in some percentage point of attraction between okay can men. we talk about that yes i feel I, like i hate it i hate it dude like okay so if you if you had to give like a percentage i'm not i have only ever gotten seasoned math i don't have percentages for <laughs> you girl i don't have them for you i'm never gonna have them Okay, can we talk about this? Like, oh, they yeah. say they're a bisexual, but they've never dated a man, or they've never dated, never dated a woman. And it's like, you're thinking in a binary term here. Already, already, already. Because first of all, contrary to popular belief, people that are that are on the asexual spectrum can also still be bisexual, even if they're not interested in having sex. And so this idea that you have to like have a relationship with or to have sexual relations with all of the sexes or all of the genders that you can in order to be considered bisexual or pansexual is wrong. Mm -hmm. But, you know, okay, let me bring this back. I don't want this to be like me being angry, even though it makes me angry. What I want to say to you, question asker, or, uh, is that you don't owe anyone that but yourself. Mm -mm. You live in your truth the way that you want to live in your truth, and you don't need to explain that to anyone. Because um, at the end of the day, while it is important, of course, to have examples of ourselves in the world, to see other bisexual people succeed and, and, and reach their dreams and to be representation, at the end of the day, your sexuality is an incredibly private thing and yeah. you don't have to share it with anyone. And you don't have to tell anyone either. Ever and I say this all the time on the show, you don't ever have to come out if you don't want to. You don't ever have to make it known that you like are queer at all if you're not comfortable or if it's not safe for you to do that or if you just don't want to. You don't have to explain yourself. You're not an encyclopedia. 
If people want answers, they can go on the internet and consult Miss Google like everybody else. Maybe if they want answers, they could also look inside themselves and be like, wait, why do I really need to know this? At all. Why, why do people think they can ask incredibly invasive questions of queer people and then not be met with, that's none of your business? Okay, the chat's popping off 100%, 100%. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. I just, mind your business. It's so, it's so simple. Yeah. Um, but regardless, question yeah. asker, I hope that, that that was helpful to you, and I hope that, you know, you carry that with you um, and internalize that. I wish I had when I was younger mm-hmm. that I didn't have to explain it to anybody because that was really my fear of stressful. coming out. Of, yeah, it's, it's really stressful. Ever, did you have anything? I'm sorry. I feel like I took up. I feel like I was your hype person because I was like, And I yes. appreciate it. Yes. I appreciate it. No, that was, you, everything you said, I said, I would say. Amazing. We love a cosign. Um, gotcha. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us for this segment. Um, hashtag mind your business. Absolutely, Nova Jones. 100%. Hashtag mind your hashtag mind business. Your business. Um, um, after you. Okay, okay. Y'all, thank you so much for all of your questions. This question coming in today, your the questions you've asked in previous episodes, and the questions you're going to ask for our next episode on August 30th. Mm-hmm. Um, we can always learn so much more from each other. And again, uh, if, you know, there's always more resources on the itgetsbetter.org website. And we, speaking of it gets better, it's, um, man, I'm really killing these transitions. That one was a good one. I don't know what you're talking about. You were really doing well. I, I hyped up and then I got two in my you got head. Got in here. You got two in here. You were doing great. Got two in here. But you know what? Speaking of it gets better, <laughs> it is time for Thriving and Enliven with the It Gets Better Project. Yay! So as you guys know, It Gets Better is a a treasure trove of resources for queer people across the country, across the yes. globe. Um, and one of the ways that they like to give these resources is through video format. Um, and way, way back in our first episode, we've seen videos throughout the whole series. And now they're coming out with a series of like 20 plus new videos um, that talk about kind of like the fundamentals of LGBTQIA language. Um, and they're animated, and our lovely producers, um, Lauren Grant and Shelton. Oh gosh, take his heart! Lindsay, <laughs> or Shelton Lindsay are, um, are, <laughs> they are a part of this project, and we're so, so proud of them. And it's also, you know, being produced by uh, Henley Street Media, and we're so thankful to them. Um, but we're gonna watch a few of them with you right now. They're so cute, you guys. You can come out in different ways. To yourself or to others. No two ways of coming out are the same. There's no right or wrong way. It's never too early. It's never too late. You can also choose to never come out. Gender expression is how we present our gender to the world. It can be through clothing, hair, voice, pronouns, behavior, and lots of other things. Life is a journey, and how you see yourself can change. That is okay. Actually, it's awesome. cute and awesome i love them (laughs) so very much and no literally no literally yeah no i thought you were gonna finish it and then i thought we were gonna finish each other's um sentences sentences (laughs) our sentences (laughs) no truly these videos are really i'm sorry i there's like a delay i can't i but i'm just gonna say these videos are very cute they're the music is adorable the characters are adorable and the message is pitch perfect i think uh for the videos you've seen so far and the videos that are on the website so be sure to check out those videos there's 
over 20 more just like them on the itgetsbetter.org website. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, pop off in the chat on our next episode. We want to know which one is your favorite. Absolutely. Absolutely, and we want to know. Speaking of next episode, I hate to say it, but we've come to the end of the show today, y'all. Boo! I know. <laughs> Boo! I know, I know, I know. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you so much for your questions and your comments and the chat blowing up. Uh, remember, it's 100% none of their business if somebody asks you an intrusive question. Um, and you can catch us again on August 30th. Absolutely. Um, and if you weren't able to catch us live, we will be on YouTube. Um, th that's where all the episodes are recorded, pre-recorded and placed on there. So please find us there. And once again, we would love to thank the Humble Bundle community for their generous contributions that make this show uh, run, that keep our lights on, uh, and, and that you know generally allow us to do the show that we love to do, that we look forward to doing every two weeks with you guys. Um, ever, what are you taking away today? <sighs> I have no excuse not to be doing crafts to make my life better. <laughs> <laughs> This whole episode, the one thing I've just taken personally was that video of like <laughs> making things cool. That I was hit like, you that hard, is, huh? Feels like you're. Feels like this is about me. <laughs> 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 what about you? Um, mind your business, uh -huh. and unless it means supporting your local library, in which case. Never mind your business. Always do that. Libraries do way more for communities across the country than anyone gives them credit for. Um, so, you know, so salute to our local librarians across the country. Support them. Donate. Volunteer. Vote to keep them well funded. They do a lot for your community that you don't even realize that they do. So you know, local yeah. libraries. Thank you, local libraries. Mm -hmm. um, and y'all, thank you so much for joining us. Stay perfectly queer, and we will see you in a week. Bye. Bye. Two weeks. Bye.